Hey there, everybody. Jimmy with Two the Top Crane. I had a subscriber ask me to do a video uh, covering the topic of gross versus net capacity, and then also uh, talking about deductions. You know, deductions for accessories, um, deductions for rope, <clears throat> excuse me, and etc. So I'll probably dive into a little bit about the math side of things as far as it pertains how it pertains to operating a crane on this video and this this is completely off the cuff unscripted we're gonna do this one take if I make a mistake we're just gonna back up and keep on trucking so you guys will have to bear with me on that but let's jump straight into it I'll try to scoot back here where you guys can see this whiteboard hopefully you you can still hear me okay so all cranes have a gross capacity so we'll just put, and remember my penmanship and artistry is terrible. So there's gross capacity, net capacity. What's the difference between these two? So your gross capacity is what you're going to get out of your load chart. So let's just pick a random number. Let's say our gross capacity is 20,000 pounds. So that is the maximum amount the crane would pick at that radius with that configuration, whatever is 20,000 pounds. That's the number we're going to pick. It's easy math, even numbers. So along with that, we got to figure out what our net capacity is. So that's great that the crane can physically pick up that much, but there's other forces acting on the crane beyond just the load. So let's say we've got a thousand pound block or a thousand pound ball hanging. So we've got 1,000 pounds here that we've got to subtract. So that knocks us down to 19,000. And then let's say with the way we've got the crane configured, we've got the jib stowed on the side or on the side of the boom. So it's folded back, stowed on the side of the boom. Um, let's say that that deduction is 500 pounds. So now we got to go in, take another 500 pounds off of this. So that's going to put us at 18.5. Now let's pretend that we've got 500 pounds of rigging. So we're going to subtract another 500 for rigging. And I'll just put R there for rigging, this was the jib, um, this was the block or the ball, that's not very good B. So now we're down to 18,000. Now what other deductions would we have? Um, so we've got a single top hanging off the side of the, or off the tip of the boom that we're not using. Uh, this single top I think on the ATF two. 200 or ATF 180 is about 220 pounds so we're just gonna make it an even 200 up for easy math purposes so we'll put an ST there for single top so now we're gonna be down to 17 8 So you can see our crane capacity went down considerably as soon as we started adding our deductions in. Some people overlook this and it's a terrible practice to be in because if you're overlooking this kind of stuff anytime you get close to your capacity you're actually going to be over. So with our deductions on there that leaves us with a net capacity of 17,800. which is all well and good, unless your piece weighs 19,000, then you're gonna be in trouble. So you can't just look at a piece or get the weight on a piece and it says 19,000, then look at your load chart and uh, you see 20,000 on there, you're like, oh, I'm good, I can pick that. Well, not necessarily. Once you throw your deductions in there, you start losing capacity pretty quickly. Now, there's also another deduction that some cranes have, not all cranes make you do this, 
um, but it's deduction for parts of line not used. So this may start going over some heads, but let's say for instance we've got this 17,800 pound net capacity figured out, but we've got a thousand pound block reeved with two parts of line. So like if your boom was sticking up here, your line comes off the tip, goes through your block, and back up. So that's two parts of line. But let's imagine there are line poles 20,000 pounds. So we can make the pick with a single part of line and some cranes will have a D note in the notes, which you should be familiar with the notes on your crane, that any parts of line beyond what is required for the pick have to be calculated as a deduction. So what that means is since this crane would pick this with single line, if our line if our line pull is twenty thousand, and so we have an extra part of line that's just sitting there that's not necessary. So if our load charts or our D notes tell us that we need to deduct for the unused parts of line, then we have to figure out how much rope is hanging from here to here on that one part. So if we have 200 feet of boom out and that rope weighs one pound per foot, which is kind of a standard for most mid-sized cranes, well, we have 200 extra pounds of rope that we're not using for the pick that has to be calculated as a deduction. Again, that's not all cranes, that's some cranes. So you have to be familiar with your notes. But if that's the case, if our crane says that we have to deduct for unused parts of line, let's say our piece weighs 17,700 pounds. Well, according to this net capacity with these deductions, we could pick that. But if our notes say deduct your unused parts of line and you have 200 feet of boom with your rope at one pound per foot, that's another 200 pounds off. So that puts you down to 17.6. Now all of a sudden you can't make your 17,700 pound pick. So hopefully that didn't go over everybody's head. But there are cranes out there and you have to pay attention to your notes. You have to read that book and you have to pay attention to your notes. There are cranes out there that will that are asking you to deduct your unused parts of line. And that means any parts of line that aren't necessary for the pick. Also, if uh, let's continue with the same scenario. Let's say we have um, the jib erected with a ball on it. So now we have the jib erected. Say the jib weighs a thousand pounds. Well, that would be 1,000 pounds of deduction, which would, instead of making the 17.6, we had 500 out before, so it's going to make it 16.6, no, 17.1, that's where we'd be. Because the jib, the weight of the jib has to be deducted if you're picking off the main, because you're not using the weight of the jib or you're not using the jib for the pick. So the weight of the jib on the boom has to be deducted. And it'll say in your chart or your notes how much to deduct for the jib erected. Now, if you were using the jib to make the pick, you would not deduct the weight of the jib because you were using the jib for the pick. So you'd be using your jib load chart. It's a separate load chart from your main boom load chart. So if you're working off main boom with the jib erected, then this jib is a pretty large deduction. A lot more so than if it's stowed on the side of the boom. Also you would have to deduct this extra line if they want you to deduct unused parts of line and you'd have to deduct the weight of this ball. So you can see even though you look at your load chart 
and it says, hey, I can pick 20,000 pounds at, let's just call it 50 feet. When you start adding in all of the stuff that pertains to making the pick, you start running out of capacity pretty fast. And that gets a lot of people in trouble that go out and preview jobs. So, um, for example, there's a guy at our company that he previews a lot of jobs. He'll look at the load chart, but he doesn't factor in all this extra stuff a lot of times. And so we have to manipulate things on site a little bit. But I hope, hope everybody kept up with that. And really, I get the question a lot. Do you have to go to college to operate a crane? Well, no. Is there math involved? Yes. Absolutely. There's formulas for rigging angles, and I'm not going to go into that. We'll go into that on another video. Um, but the formula, the, most of it's going to be basic math. So if you can do 1 plus 1 equals 2, you're probably going to be okay. I mean, it's going to get a little bit more involved in that, but um, if you have round crane mats or crane pads, then you're going to use this formula. Okay. Which is pi r squared. It's what you use to calculate the surface area of a round crane pad or round surface. Calculate the surface area of a circle. Layman's terms. So if you have round pads, if you're filling out a pre-lift worksheet, you're going to have to be able to calculate the surface area of that round pad. To do that, it's pi r squared, which is pi times the radius. We all know that the radius is from the center of the circle to the outside edge, the radius squared. So if the radius of this mat, if this was a four foot wide or four foot diameter mat, the radius would be two. So you take two times two, which is four, so that would be the radius squared and then take that times pi which is 3.14 and some change but you can just go with 3.14 so that's how you calculate the surface area of your round crane mats other than that your math is going to be basic addition subtraction um, other than your rigging formulas you know adding up how much stuff weighs you're going to calculate your counterweights and whatnot. So, anyway, I wanted to get that out there before I forgot about it. It's a pretty good topic and I hadn't covered it yet. If I went over anybody's head with it, throw it in comments and I can try to do another one of these a little bit more detailed or more in layman's terms. But, anyway, there you have it gross versus net capacity with a crane.